What's up, boys and girls? So I'm just going to do a I'm working on something. Figured I'd shoot a video. Shocker. Um, so this is a big, this is a countertop. It's upside down right now. There's a beer cooler going to be going in there. We're, um, we're going to deliver it to the customer today, but it's rainy out and I don't feel like taking it out in the rain. So I'm going to be doing some planing on it. Just, I've got to install it. And um, since this is the rough side here that's going to be installed down, I figure I'll just take a couple of the imperfections out of it and make it a little simpler to install. And I'm going to run a couple planes and decided, well, I'll just let the video run while I run them. So maybe I can shoot a little bit with each one. So we got, uh, let's see here. This is one of those cheapo compass planes um, that I converted to a, a scrub. See the camber on the iron there, and it's and that's not really a super aggressive scrub camber, by the way. Um, that's about just a little in between six and eight inch radius, and that's not super aggressive for a scrub. It's more of a jack camber, which is like uh, this is a jack. Hold on, I'm gonna put you down. On this old uh, Auburn Tools jack, it was a pretty standard uh, jack camber, which is around just around eight inches um, hand ground. So I figure I might run that one too. And um, of course, the new version Stanley 62 low angle. I might run that a little bit, and then I always. I bring the handyman wherever I go just for Casey Benton, but so I'm gonna set you up. I'm gonna do some planing and uh yeah, I'll give you a look at the underside real quick. So this has got natural edge on the out on the face here. It's uh 10 feet long and uh the bottom's all finished. It's all polyurethane, it's uh northern white cedar. And what I'm doing right now, the reason that I flipped it over is I'm letting some of the moisture come out of this rough sawn side. Um, it started to, um, after the uh, top side was all planed out, and just before I put polyurethane on it, it had started to cup up a little bit. And what happens is, is that when this top, when it's resting on the table, right now it's up on bench dogs, but when it's... Resting on the table, it's losing more moisture out of the top than it is out of the bottom. And as it loses moisture out of the top, the top shrinks and it causes it to cup up like this. So I flipped it all, well, after I put polyurethane on it, it seals the other side. And then it started to flatten out and then I figured, well, I'll flip it over. And now, I don't know if you can see down this line right here, but now it's almost perfectly flat. And this is really, you see this often, especially in workbench building about alternating your uh, your grains here this is what you get when you alternate grains which is why I don't like actually doing it all the time in this case it's not going to make a difference because it'll be flat but um, what you get when you alternate grains is you get one going like this and one going like that and then one going like this and you end up with a surface that's like this uh, I can see the argument of both sides but I think I would rather run them all the same way and have to deal with just one consistent issue. And if everything was perfectly dry, it'd be fine. But these are mostly dry. They've been drying for, you know, two years or so. But anyway, I'm going to get up doing some playing in here and I'll probably set you guys up down here so you can see most of what I'm doing. So I'm just trying to take out what is the worst on that side. I don't know if that, that doesn't look that bad. I was going to say if that light's too much in your eyes, but um, scrub plane, Wood River version 3 iron. And um, what I have is right through here is my high spot. 
Now, in this particular setting, it overhangs the thing so much, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever, but just figured, you know, just to aid me in installation, I should take out what's worse. And interesting. It's not even that bad over here. That kind of gets pretty close there. So this is actually not going to take much time here. Whenever you're flattening something, you make sure you concentrate on the high spots. This one also, this is one of those reverse, reverse um, depth adjusters. So I actually have to spin it the opposite way. And uh, I'm just going to scrub off, if you were flat in a workbench or anything like that, I'm just going to scrub off some of this, wherever the high spots are. So. For the sake of seeing some planing, since I took out that bump and that's all it took, let's hit some other planes here. Let's try the handyman on it. I have this set up for finishing. You can hear it run across the scallops. I'm just going to take the scallops out of it. side a little bit. Let's check this side. On this side you can see it's still got a little bit of cup in it. Not very much. It's flattening out little by little as this side is losing all the moisture because it can't go through the poly. So it's flattening out little by little. It's almost there. Now that little bit of cup in this I could easily secure down and I'll use uh I'll use blocks on this to secure it down so that it can move throughout its life. In other words, it won't be screwed through the bottom up into this. They will have, uh, I don't know how to explain it really. See if I got something. It will have, sorry. It's gonna have blocks screwed into it. Kind of like, it'll be a, block cut off like this the block will be screwed into the top and then this will have a rabbit cut out of it like that so that this will fit around the base and then screw into the top so that the top can move without securing the base down and what little bit this is out right here I can easily, uh, you know, secure, I'll be, I'll secure the front side and then go to the back side and throw a clamp on it and then pull it down little by little as I put those blocks in across the side here. So that would end up perfectly flat. 
And the thing that you want to do is you want to get it as close to flat as you can because you don't want to put a ton of pressure over there and then crack out one of your seams, which you certainly could do. But uh, let me go down, work on the other end here, just so you guys can hear some planning. You can see actually that side of that right there is pretty flat, which is nice. Moisture is working perfectly right now. Let's try a different point. Let's try the uh, low angle here. I really like this plane. I like the A2 iron in it. Also, there's going to be an overhang on that side. I mean, on this side. So I don't have to go right out to the edge. So don't worry about chipping out any of my poly. You guys can see where the high spot is here. It's right through here. It's probably not very much over here, just I can tell just by looking at it. And it's still kind of high on this one right here. So I'm gonna concentrate just on the middle of this board, just taking it out. Let's do that. So this one's got the Norris adjuster back off the, the um, cap, and the uh, lever cap a little bit. Not enough to um, to make it loose. You don't want it loose. It don't move around too much, but these Norris adjusters, I think a lot of people find them finicky. I really don't have a big problem with them. Let's see where we're cutting here. way over on the left side I mean the right side take a little of them on the right side and see what happens now it's cutting in the middle I'm tighten it down just a little bit advance the iron just a little more tighten it down a little more that's not enough cut. That's not enough cut. Try the old lob and tools plane. <coughs> you see how high up you guys can see. See if you can see my head. I want to make sure because not everybody understands adjusting these things. So this wedge through seasonal movement has gotten a little bit tight, which causes a little bit of a problem for me starting it. So just put the wedge down to where the iron is not moving. Typically, I just push it in, but I, I've got to adjust this wedge a little bit. It's just a little bit of iron showing there. Just want to make sure that my first pass is going to dig way in. It's pretty heavy. So, to back off the iron, tap on the back. I always like to you see me as a habit, I hit the wedge right afterwards all the time. Kind of happens. You know, habitually, this is really a wonderful plan to advance, to set the side to side, which with a camber you don't really have to super worry about, but you tap on the side. So some people like to tap on the 
side of the plane too. You can get a lot more done with this quickly than anything else. You can see the size of these. These are thick, beautiful shavings. Work shavings. Shavings that working people are going to use. Still a lot high there. Take some more off it. This is not a jack, I mean, this is not a scrub plane. This is a typical jack camber, and it works actually wonderfully. It's exactly telling me what's high, it's only hitting what's high. This is, uh, this is really a pleasure to work with. see all the scallops and you can go through and hit the scallops really quick and end up with a pretty decent I'll show you the surface hold on your seats because there's gonna be some tear out so you know this isn't you see what I'm taking here these are not easy shavings see how easy it's going through it so there's certainly gonna be some tear out you can see the tear out right here right here but if you look at the surface you know it's not super super rough this is really sharp iron and uh, it's not creating very big scallops and as you go through you can see you can see where that high spot is of the scallop and you can just concentrate on those as you go you know go across and smooth it right out so you know I'll try and get a better view here but this isn't a super scalloped surface it might look worse in the camera than it is but a little more you guys get a better view over here. Make another pass here. So you can hear it better. But the jack is telling me exactly where it's high. It's the only place it's hitting here. And as this area gets bigger like it is over here it's telling me I'm getting closer to flat because the plane's registering across a big area where right here it's not super flat it's much smaller and it's getting way bigger over here so really you can let the plane tell you and just keep working Shavings are getting longer and longer. I'm getting closer to the end of the board, so this is getting closer to flat. It's probably already good the way it is. It's getting nice and flat through here. Since you guys are sitting right there watching, I'll throw the handyman on it to smooth it out a little bit if you were going to do that. I get this handyman set wicked tight on the uh, cap iron because I was doing some, some smoothing work with it. So I'm going to tear out. So I can't take super big shavings with it, but because the cap iron set. So I got it backed off a teeny bit. It's about a, I don't know, just maybe a 
hair more than a 30 second. I had it tighter before. It's not as tight now. close to the edge because I'm just not trying I don't want to chip out polyurethane on the side but you can see uh, how it's smoothing out the surface here and then you can see where I'm not hitting right here we can still see some scallops see if I can take that out quick why not actually you guys can almost see from here because you can see the sheen on the wood what's smooth see if I can take out some of those scallops near the edge not really sure if I'm going to be able to get to these because I left this edge alone, so this is pretty low compared to this. I could probably go across it though. Let's do that. So, yeah, that's all it took to take those scallops out. Smooth now. Actually, you can see from the sheen on it. You know, it's not smooth like I would want a top, but I took the scallops out of it. You can see it's nice and nice and smooth through here. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Just making it so I took out those two high spots just so it'll sit a little flatter. You can see the difference here between where the scallops are and where it's smooth. But when you get the right planes between, I mean, I could have done everything with that by itself. Could have left the rest of these out, just come up with that and done this in five minutes. Um, or this same thing. You know, that radius on those irons is really important. If you don't radius your jack irons, <clears throat> and if you don't have a dedicated scrub, and I'm a big believer in a number five scrub. I'll tell you that. I've seen a lot of the old turning number fours because I've got, I don't know, 10 or 12 of them. Turning a number four into a scrub. But you'll really appreciate the size of the five um, in a scrub plane. So that would be my suggestion. If you're going to have a scrub, make it a five. And um, the low angle, I'm still searching for a need for it. Uh, I love the way it cuts. I've done some awesome videos on shaving three inch thick end grain black cherry with it and making these beautiful waxy thin full width shavings. I mean it works. The plane works tremendously. I just as a joiner, I just don't have a big use for it. I'm just being dead honest. It just does not fit what I do that well. Um, Anything that I can do with that, I can do with that. Except for maybe just shaving some weird end grain. I guess if I was going to cut cookies out of some real weird, serious hardwood like white oak. And I had to smooth them. Um, it would still be real hard with that. But I mean, I could see that coming in really useful there. But anyway, so that's it. This thing's going to get installed as soon as I get some good weather. Give you a good look at the how cool this natural edge came out on this. It's I know the light's not good here, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Color came out good. The poly came out great. It looks phenomenal. It's going to be a beautiful countertop for these people. So that's it. I'll get cleaned up and... Um, on the next one. Have a great day. Hope you all are doing great and um, hope you all are staying safe.